last several years, as long as I can remember. Um, they did ask if we would consider a, a, a three-year option with a 60-day written agreement if we decide to terminate one way or another. But I don't know, at this point, I think we stick, we feel more comfortable year by year. What was the reasoning for wanting to yeah. extend it? I, I, you know, I, honestly, I didn't speak to them. They sent it into the high school. Yeah. They just sent a request and a contract to the high school. So, Joe, did you have that conversation with Paul by chance uh, about the, the motorcycle group? Yes, uh, they want to do a three-year extension, but I, I would not recommend that. I would go one year at a time. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of concerns that came yes. up over the past couple of years that we had to have some conversations with Such them. As? Um, the parking lot. He wanted to paint some spots in there, and you know, the, the painting lines on top of ours. And they, they had a storage there. shed against the, the, the building that had some flammable material in it that we had to request that they remove. Um, couple situations like that. Yeah, they were putting up uh, no parking signs. Or, um, you know, the vehicle will be towed. And that's not cool. I, 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 I mean, they they've been agreeable. It's not like they're they're you know, antagonistic or anything like that. But they they just we've had some concerns, so we want to make sure that if we need to get out. We we get out. Um, Seventeen is the personnel substitute list. Letter B is a sabbatical leave for uh, next school year for one of our high school staff members. <coughs> and that is for professional development. Um, obviously, they are required to produce and, and maintain a certain level of credits throughout that entire time. Uh, letter C is a resignation or retirement. As a result, there will be a opening that you'll see posted after this, um, after Monday's meeting. Letter D, we have uh, two resignations from athletics. Um, number two, that individual hasn't have, even started yet, but there's some concerns about uh, the ability to dedicate the necessary time so they decide it was not the best interest uh, to move forward with coaching. So that is a resignation. And as a result, we do have um, some hirings down below for that position and several others. And the letter F is volunteers. One, one thing that we were asked if we would consider, uh, the Junior Wildcats, uh, well, girls varsity, or, I'm sorry, the Junior Wildcats Junior High Cheerleading Squad folded. So they asked if we would consider if they would allow the group to cheer on a volunteer basis for our Junior High basketball. And, um, they do the football they now. They do the football now. Yeah. So we have uh, uniforms here that they, they would be able to utilize. Uh, it would, the coach would be a volunteer uh, and it would only be for home events. So we would make sure that they have the physicals, that they'd be eligible, they'd, they'd be held accountable for eligibility standards. So uh, if you guys are okay with allowing them to cheer, um, you know, they, they'll have this, it's similar to playing any other sport. Um, it's just a matter of getting out to another around So we'll probably have a motion if you guys are okay with that. It's similar to what we did in the other track participation. Um, and if you guys are okay with this, we'll move forward. Uh, Bob Black, myself, and Mr. Gorski met with the gentleman from a communications firm who deals with advertising as well as fundraising opportunities and strategic advertising on campus, throughout the buildings. Uh, if you guys are okay in inquiring about some of those opportunities, uh, we'll move forward with that and present you with certain proposals as we move forward. Uh, there may, as a result, have to be some 
policy implementation or, or adjustments, you know, depending on what we're looking to do. But this one, if you guys want nothing to do with it, we won't bother. But you know, such as uh, Coca Cola sign under the school board, you know, we might get some money for that. So we're looking at those opportunities. Yeah, exactly. I know. Uh, Schools have, have multiple scoreboards that were purchased for, as a result. So we can do that. Thank you, Wilson. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no question. Uh, with the numbers, man. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, oh, uh, and Mr. Black did mention if you're looking to, he does have. A, Several complimentary tickets for PIAA for the playoff game on Friday if anybody's interested. Get my hands on. Okay. And uh, that's it for the agenda. Be great for executive. And then we just well, for, I go to no, you go, Jeff. This is simple. So uh, I have a couple of parents. We're concerned that the basketball team hasn't done anything yet, the girls' basketball team. And I, I thought it was kind of surprising to me because by now they've had, I think, I don't think practice can start, you might know that once you're done. Practice can't start until a certain day, probably. Yeah, like it's November, season start, and they, they November 8th. Preseason, they can hit as a voluntary, I think preseason yeah. conditioning, they were a little, then few and far between. I guess the thing is there, we're used, we're used to the last couple years of how, yes. you know, yes. and there is nothing like that for sure. So they're concerned that they're not going to be ready to play. So I hope if Bob is here, I can say something to but if you would say something to him, it's right there. So just find out what's going on. Yep. You know, I, yeah. yeah. I don't, no, I don't think it's all. He I definitely know. has a different philosophy I'm sure. as far as not stepping on the in-season sports for the you know whether it's track or right now volleyball. It's different than anybody, it's like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. And I think it's like for me, it's like I, I appreciate it because I think you, yeah. you dedicate to the sports. Hard to argue. Hard to argue that. You're right. And then yeah, and yeah, but but. I do agree. They need the it's just not the norm now. Right. And, and I agree with you. I think you're right. It should be like that. Yeah. But it's not like that. Right. So. He's more of, I guess you could say, old school. It's not a war. Please, that's all I Yep. Have. Absolutely. The, uh, the yeah. start date is November 8th. November 8th. And then competitions don't start until December. Girls volleyball one. one. Oh, I did. Good. Just right. Good. Good. Bob is in Paul. Right now. Okay. December 6th. December 6th is competition. I have a question about some of these, the, the funding of the school program. So this is a lot of money. Uh, obviously, I think we need to do a lot of what's on this list. How does, how do the funding requests come in for things other than facilities? Facilities, you, you can see that it needs to be upgraded. But if, if one of our academic programs wants new textbooks or new equipment or something like that, how does that come in? Because I, I, I don't think I ever see those. We, we have a cycle for each, uh, each academic content area is on an annual cycle for textbooks. Right. And uh, they, they are a lot of... We have 150,000 in the budget for textbooks each year. And based on the... Um, the strategic plan, yeah. I think it's within the strategic plan, it says what contact area is which year. So we allot the 150,000 for textbooks, workbooks, whatever is needed for that subject area per year. So that's how we do the textbook piece of it. Correct. Now, from a curriculum standpoint, there are uh, supplemental materials that teachers may request that if they, you know, they can basically substantiate why they're doing it, and, and maybe have some research as to what the supplemental materials might benefit. Um, you know, we would consider that and if it's in the budget, if we have some room uh, just, with, within the curriculum. Yeah, we just discussed, we had a staff meeting today with the administration, and we just discussed the, the budget timelines to start for the 2021 school year. So I've asked all the principals to start gathering. I, I set out a budget template to each of um, the, the teacher level, and I think they do it mostly by department, um, but they're to put on that, those spreadsheets, their requests for the 2021 school year. They go into the principal's office, and then within like two weeks of them coming to the principal's, then they have to come up to the business office so that we can review them and see if 
they're within um, what our budget guidelines would be for the 2021. So that's the start of it. Right. And then based on our discussions that we have um, starting like in March, April, May, when we start talking about the actual budget and you know what our millage is going to look like and what kind of funding that we have from the state, then we kind of make a final decision as far as what from those original spreadsheets can actually fit into the budget. So. It, well, it, it seems to me like we're very tight with, with money, except when we're looking at facilities. And it, that makes sense in a way, but it, if we're going to spend all this money on a new athletic complex and not only replacing what we have, but doing large upgrades, which might be warranted, but is, you know, I'm just wondering if there are things left unfunded that would really improve the education across the district. I mean, we uh, spend a large yeah, amount of money on a year basis on oh, yeah, I understand. classroom instruction and you know equipment and things that they need. These type of things come up more on a limited basis over time. You know, it was, it was 10 years ago that we did it came to the athletic complex. So, you know, that's 10 years down the road, like where we do spend a decent amount of money within classroom and instruction on a year basis that we don't spend this type of money on. Right. And, and all I'm trying to understand is kind of the institutional way that it happens because I don't see those I don't see those funding requests come yeah. come in. Right. Well like we had a little conversation I think one time maybe you were in a just with the tablets. Every every kid had the tablets when the book just came up in the backpacks and we're thinking, well, you know, and, and I think you mentioned just something that night it was, you know, an IT thing where it would have to be a whole upgrade of everything to, to do something. I think that's yeah. That's just an idea. And I think that I mean, compared to some of these numbers, that that might not be that big of a. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. There's money out there though for that, right? Grant wise. Yes. We talked a little bit about the safety part. Yeah. Yes. The safety. It's and, free and money that we don't have to allocate ourselves. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but definitely an increase in some of the, the hardware, um, whether it's tablets or you know more laptop parts, things like that, um, because a lot of the technologies, particularly in the computer science area, are reliant on having the hardware or computer to program the actual devices and, and robotics and things that we're going to use. Um, you know, I think we're just starting. It's a couple months in. Um, I think we've. We have a lot of a lot of discussions about where we're headed with this, and I think that budgeting is part of, certainly part of that. Um, but I think it's also something that we need to do with trepidation to make sure that we're not just buying stuff to buy it. We right. need to make sure that it's going to be a transformative in terms of the instruction for which it's used. Um, I know we've had a couple of good comments and some questions on lack of textbooks and things, so I don't know if that solves that problem or not, and perceived problem. It's not necessarily, I think things are moving away from paper. A lot of it out. So, yeah. 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 Well, that's my question, too. You said when you order these textbooks, not any online version that you can access. Is that integrated into our systems, or we have to go to a separate website to access that? Or if they give you like a PDF, and you can go into there, and they'll sign in there, they have the system they have now. Well, initially, they were all separate. We have a program called Clever now, right? That means we can house all of those websites each access point from one spot. Okay. So they can go in and pull up. So you sign on yeah. to Clever and to the issue to whatever places they need. Exactly. Um, also our new Ed Insight program, the technology um, database which is really comprehensive and there's so much information on there that teachers can access at this point. Um, it's going to take a while to get acclimated to it as well as to understand what all of the functions that it has, but it's really robust and we think it's going to be really valuable. Yeah. Who does it develop at the high school level now? Like this one, he said, he's going to trickle down to over everybody. 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 That's district point. I know at some levels, like elementary schools, they were concerned last year with paper, the amount of paper being used, and then on top of that, with the new system, they're going to have to use more paper. Right. 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 Certain grades seem to make a lot of discussion of it. They were using a lot more uh, paper and then uh, and a lot of running out, I guess, at, at some time, so or having to get more. So I don't, and I don't know, again, a perceived problem versus a, a real problem. But, uh, I don't know. And is that, you know, individual laptops or something to help curb that kind of thing? And I don't know. Well, one of the things that we're doing to address the, the paper and wasting this paper is when we look at the diagnostic tools that we're doing. So for devils, three times a year. The middle school is going to be utilizing ZapPath. All of that is done electronically now. So right out of the gate where we would have to be copying all of those things and storing them for three times a year, it's all going electronic. And then it's going to filter into that Ed Insight, which is going to house all of the information. So right now, Brian's team is working on getting the current data in there out to teachers. And it's happening mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Um, but he's also having to go back and pull up historic data as well. So the ultimate goal is to have three to five years of data in there to be able to uh, come up with your trends and your patterns. So we have the current data in there now, and he's working to go back to get that in as quickly as possible. Moving forward, once the assessment data comes to the district, we're setting up that it's going to automatically upload within three to five days. So teachers will have immediate access to it and be able to go in to alter their data in their planning as well. So working forward, but we're still working, you know, in reverse as well. And uh, we're not even 45 days into this, but there's a great deal of information in there. And then at the middle school, like I said, to work um, with the use of that flex period a day, students are going to have the opportunity for an hour to be able to go in and work on that diagnostic tool, but then it's also going to create a individualized learning pattern where it'll help students fill in some of those gaps where there are maybe some deficits as well. So um, there's a, a big professional development opportunity coming up on the 31st. And then again, in November, we've identified a team of teachers that are going to be with our consultant for an entire day to be able to really, truly focus on that as well. So right now, that's going to be available. We have the technology here to be able to do it. It's just going to be a matter of now scheduling it so that all students have the opportunity to be exposed to that as well. So, there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, and they, uh, the last couple of years, they really have <coughs> expanded the bandwidth capabilities and your funds and things like that. So we 
have the infrastructure currently, we believe, to, to manage whatever it is that we want to do in the next few years. So, do we still ever get Wi-Fi on a related thing, but on a related thing? This one question I really gave on this morning is they couldn't find a guest Wi-Fi. Uh, in certain spots of the campus, we do. Uh, depending on what's going on, they can turn it on and off. So if we're having a meeting here in the district office, Brian can click it on here, okay. give them a passcode, they, they can access it. But I don't. I'll have to ask him if he has a general one for people that come in, right. just randomly. Yeah. 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 And I, and I don't know what they were looking to get on for. They didn't want to connect everything and ask yeah. him. He's paying for it, so we should have, have some access. Yeah, yeah. Those were the games they complained about it? Yeah. Walked out there, there are people who somehow run their business through the yeah. internet, and if they're able, the, the service up here sucks, especially inside the building cellular service, yeah. so if they could get connection to an, uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot, that I think would be a good olive branch gesture. Yeah, we could talk about it. Might have been just something. And state assessment results, we, uh, we met or surpassed the state averages in all the uh, two areas. We have since been mapping and meeting, but Math, we were 0.9% away from the state average, and then the reading was 1.2 or 1.3 or something like that. We were within the average. Um, everything else was far beyond. So in June, when you see this many times put out there, then we'll, we'll be in the top tier again. Uh, so that was good. Uh, SATs were still not good. They, that's a cohort, so that information comes in piecemeal. So uh, quite honestly, I don't even know how that could be. Grant Times gets their information, it's usually a year or two behind where we're at, but um, so that, that was some big news. Well, why, why is the difference like some grade? Just, <coughs> I'm sorry, it's weird. Is some grade only one that's behind? Like, yeah, we, that's, we just got it, so we have to break it down. Yeah. Some of it has to do with it. So it's the cohort. Right. So, I mean, Which grade level was it? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. The SAT scores were we're still waiting, so they're co they oh, come in okay. throughout the year as kids take them. So we're, okay. preliminarily, it looks like we're at least where we were at last year, if not a little bit better. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to that. Last last year's scores, I was looking at them by chance a couple days ago for a certain reason, and um, we only had a sixth grade math and the SAT scores were not yeah. at the state average. Yeah. But I, Counted, there were 36 districts listed, and 26 of them did not beat it in the sixth grade. Yeah. So something's going on with the system. Exactly. Over, over until we have a chance to really dive into it. Um, uh, I mean, you know, region across the state, right? Yeah. Across, uh, across the state, that was an issue. And you'll find those pockets. Sometimes they, you know, they, they put in a series of questions into the assessment to, to see how. You? I don't know. I think that people find it difficult. Mm -hmm. There's a thought too, that they changed the weight of what the question, the question okay. types. Yeah. So that, that could be. That has come up in talking with our consultant. Um, I was talking to him several weeks ago, and he said he had some ideas, but he needed that data to come 